Hi. Today I want to make a video about emulating the film look, the infamous film look inside Darktable. Um, before we carry on further, um, the film look is kind of bullshit. There are, of course, many film emulsions uh, available around there. But then also the final look of film will depend a great, a great deal about how you process it. But first and foremost, how you exposed it. I have here four different scans of a Kodak Portra 400 that I shot five years ago, I think. Or oh, actually almost seven, uh, almost six, sorry. Um, and this, the interesting thing is I also have a digital picture here that was shot in, in the exam exact same conditions, although a bit earlier than the film shots. Um, so it will be useful to have the film scans to edit, to try to color match um, the digital one. But you see here that I have basically four different renditions of the same scan done with the same software, which is silver fast. Um, this one here, the, the last one on the right, was um, entirely um, processed by the software, including the inversion. Um, the second one here also, but with a different exposure. Uh, and, by, and by exposure, I mean the, the hardware exposure on the scanner. So this one got more light through the film um, because film, um, it's not film light, it's uh, silver fast, is able to control um, the exposure time of the scanner. So this is a, an hardware um, exposure and also it does multi-exposure, which is like two different exposures. Uh, basically, it's a kind of a HDR thing to increase the dynamic range. So the, the picture is scanned twice at two different exposure levels, and then um, the two exposures are uh, stacked on top of each other. And this one here is again scanned by film light with the same exposure level as the, the second one, but this one was inverted through Nega Doctor in Darktable. So the inversion was done uh, manually, and this one is version, uh, and all the color profiling and color corrections were done by uh, Silverfast as well as this one. So you see here that we have, uh, and this one, sorry, is also the same exposure as, as the, the last one, um, but uh, roughly inverted through Nega Doctor without all the corrections, uh, without basically balancing colors. So you see here four different interpretations of the same scan, which is to say that there is no such thing as film look. And you see here we're, with a darker picture, we get a lot more saturation in the sky. And that's very unlike uh, digital, because in digital, when you boost the exposure value, since it's a linear medium, the saturation stays the same. Uh, but in film, it's actually inverted. So um, in, if you increase the exposure, then the saturation will decrease. And if you decrease the exposure, then the saturation will increase. Uh, and since in film, you expose for the mid-tones, especially for this reason, because you want the proper saturation in the mid-tones. Whatever happens in highlights is kind of an accident. Uh, here we are in an almost backlit situation. So the background is much brighter than the subject. So of course I exposed for the subject and I sacrificed the background. But if the ratios of uh, brightness between the foreground and the background, uh, between the subject and the background, had been different, then we would have, in this picture here, a much saturated sky. And this again is Kodak Portra 400, so it's not known to be super high saturation, it's not Fuji, Velvia or, so, or, or similar things. But even though, even there, we still have a, a noticeable difference uh, 
between the saturation in the sky and it's kind of difficult to say which sky looks more natural um, because this one feels definitely more pleasing uh, and probably closer to reality but then film is all about distortions um, and so that's what you get if you expose for the subject so let's start here um, with the bright picture that has been entirely processed by silver fast so what i did though is um add the color calibration because you see that what film silver fast did is a bit on the yellow side and this is easily understood because kodak portra is uh, balanced for d50 illuminance so the, the white balance is pretty much uh, set and since this was shot just before sunset, the light was a bit warmer, uh, so a uh, colder, uh, like a lower um, color temperature, and basically the white is off. Um, so just to get a more neutral white, <clears throat> I added the color calibration, and here we are. Here we have the the snapshot. In here we have uh, the same, so it's based on a on a 16-bit TIFF scanned by um, um, Silverfast. But then here I did the inversion in Negadoc 2. This was a real pain in the ass because uh, basically Negadoc 2 sh should in theory go after the input color profile. And the input color profile should in theory use the embedded ICC profile that uh, film uh, I will never manage I always want to call it film light but that's that's a different software it's silver fast but damn it so um basically the by the book things that should work didn't and I'm not quite sure why uh, maybe there is an issue in the in the profile tagging inside uh, silver fast in any case the only the only way I could managed to get a proper inversion that somehow resembled um, the own uh, silver fast rendering was by using an input profile set to Adobe, Adobe RGB which is what um, silver fast uses as a, as a default inside uh, internally instead of using the the embedded uh, ICC which is the single frame film scanner distortion and then move Negadoctor before the input color profile, which is completely illogical, but that's that's the only way I could get proper colors. You see that my rendering here is a bit more high contrast. I have a real, almost a real white. If you if you look carefully at um, the histogram here, the histogram is pretty well spread over the whole. Um, wall range so we don't have pure black which is not an issue uh, actually I, I quite like it also the the silver fast uh, default default look doesn't have pure white and we have a bit of a clipping here which is only like the see the dust so the the dust and so on here records as uh, blown highlights so it doesn't matter so you see here, the colors are slightly different, although I tried my best to color match both. Um, and from now, now on, for the rest of, uh, of this exercise, we will use the Nega Doctor um, rendition. Uh, because first of all, um, <laughs> I know what happened in there, so I can uh, I understand what kind of color distortions happened. And that they are actually quite basic. Uh, Nega Doctor does very stupid math inside, but also um, it has a bit more contrast and a bit more contrasty um, film uh, rendition will be easier to color match against, um, well, uh, a digital image. So here is the picture. Um, I color matched, matched, yeah, against um, the reference. So let's have the reference. 
and it took me quite a while um, because it's not easy to to do. Um, so it's the this is the final result, and I will walk you through the steps of doing so. Um, you see that I didn't. So if you look at the sky, I have a. Um, just have to notice that the sky is more cloudy on this side. It, the, the angle is not exactly the same, and also I shot with 85 millimeters lens on an APS sensor so that's quite a big magnification and here it was a 50 millimeter shot on a, well 35 millimeter film so the angle the, the field of view is much larger but also the angle is not exactly the same so this was more on the right compared to this image so the background changed um, the, the sky here is more cloudy than here um, and so the we don't have a real spot of blue sky, uh, which will make it a bit challenging. So our highlights reference will be the clouds, basically. And also the background here, which is um, a hill covered in a sort of um, yellowish grass um, of uh, having its uh, autumn colors. It is closer from the lens as this one uh, this is farther away and this is important because since there is obviously some sort of atmospheric atmospheric hazing here the atmospheric effects is a uh, bluish and when you add blue on top of yellow that adds up to gray so the background here is expected to look a bit more desaturated than here because we have a thicker um, depth of atmosphere with humidity and so blue um, a blue shift that is, that will be more intense as on this picture which where the background is closer so the there is less um, depth of uh, atmosphere here so that will make it challenging but i have not found a better match of pictures um i didn't shoot this sh this, this shoot uh, six years ago to make a forensic uh, video about reproducing the same look uh, so that's the best i have and uh, wh what we will try to convey is more like the the same feel uh, rather than having the same exact same rendition you see that I didn't manage to get the exact same look on the face, uh, so the skin tones are a bit different. On the film, film one, I actually don't really like the the colors, and even if I take the other one from um, Silver Fast here, so this is the Silver Fast, and this is the Nega Doctor one. I find the the skin tones uh, too yellow. Which is not surprising because most film stock is balanced for uh, Caucasian skin, which triggered the whole uh, internet flame war a couple of years ago. Um, and I, I don't like the the feel and the look of Asian skin um, with this kind of film. I, I much prefer this one, which is more in the red, has a bit more red, has a bit more saturation on the, on the skin and also it's much closer to what her um, skin looks like in reality in, in real um, while this is too desaturated for my taste and yeah too uh, too yellow you see also um, since there is less of a yellow shift the the, the top is is more red here and more orange here but overall, we managed to get uh, pretty much the same color for the boots and for the pants. So that's a win. And for the, the gravel, um, it was a bit more difficult because it's it, re it's, it records um, lighter on the digital one than on the film. And that's obviously due to the expanded dynamic range of the sensor. Uh, so this looks less close to black. Uh, but also, since there is a, there is a certain time shift here, the, the light had changed and the sun was probably a bit lower, so this was lit a bit differently. So again, not easy to match both, but we will try our best. Uh, 
I think the best... Um, Yeah, we'll disable everything and start again. So I have the lens correction module enabled by default, chromatic aberration enabled by default. That's nothing artistic. It's just to fix the lens issues. Um, then I have the exposure. Um, I, I adjust it to one EV just to match roughly the skin tones. Uh, not very important. That's not the bulk of this video anyway. Color calibration, so what I did is I, um, with the spot color mapping, I uh, measured in the cloud here. And then again in this cloud to match the white balance. So both, picture, both pictures right now have the same white balance, which we can confirm here by looking at this bright cloud here and this bright cloud here so they, they have the same color and yet you see that there is quite a huge difference in color um the shadows here they are neut neutral very gray they don't have this kind of um, warm and slightly greenish uh, color um and the sky is a bit more bluish as well. Uh, in Filmic RGB I used the no chrominance preservation so it's possible to do it um, the no chrominance preservation will basically uh, will basically desaturate highlights much more sorry yeah the, if you disable it I mean it desaturates highlights much more than the max RGB um, and the max RGB makes it easier to drive the desaturation through um, the color balance RGB so you can drive the desaturation selectively here. For this picture and for this purpose I found it easier to use the no chrominance preservation here to start with. Um, but you see that it's not like as I said uh, people may exaggerate how much film desaturates by default because you see here on the hill, the yellow gets much more desaturated than this. And so yes, the blue sky is less dense than uh, if you use the max RGB, but then everything else looks washed. Um, so I'm not convinced that the no chrominance preservation is actually closer to film look. Um, Anyway, in both scenarios, we will have to uh, drive uh, the, the highlight saturation manually in color balance RGB. And you see that even there, I desaturated the highlights, but I had to resaturate a lot the shadows. So again, Filmic is inspired by fi how film behaves, but it's not uh, meant and even not designed to be a uh, close one for one match especially because there are so many film emulsions that it would be there is no such thing as film there are different film stocks so um starters so no preservation here scene uh, set it pretty much to automatically uh, match the white of the cloud and same for the black relative exposure um, so I use the automatic uh, setting stuff, however, since the film here has uh, actually doesn't really have real blacks, I increase the dynamic range a bit, up to uh, almost minus 7 EVs, in order to make it a bit easier, because if, if we start with hugely different um, lightnesses or, or brightnesses, between both pictures it will be very difficult to adjust the colors uh, so using the same kind of contrast helps and speaking of contrast i had to increase it a lot because um well because because film has a low dynamic range and, and we need to reproduce that kind of feeling um so that's it so straight away what we can notice um by the way i have the um custom RGB profile for my 
sensor and also I have a custom white balance for my sensor so my sensor should be properly neutralized at this point uh, fairly neutral fairly close to reality not much of a of an artistic uh, intent here uh, so far and not much of a color deviation uh, it's as close as it gets from original you see that the skin looks more pink than here um, Shadows are not saturated enough if you compare to here, lax color. And the shadows, they are, as I said, pretty neutral, so there is no color in there. Um, so if I was, I will start again with a new instead of color RGB and keep the former one as a reference. First thing to do, I think, is to try and match um, the highlights. Always start with the highlights. So we will do a, basically a color grading that will try to emulate this kind of look. And again, here it's very convenient that we have an actual film scan. And Kodak portrays something I very much like. Um, so we start with the highlights. And you see here that the highlights are slightly more cyan, while here they are slightly more blue. There's a slight difference in color. Um, so we will first and foremost try to shift the highlights slightly toward a kind of cyan. So blue can verge uh, more on the green side or on the magenta side. Um, see here, I can make it almost purple which usually looks good on skin, but here we are aiming for the sky. So let's do something like this. So this is before slightly purple, and now it's a bit closer to this. By the way, um, I need to set the white fulcrum because we are working in scenery fruit, and so the white is not necessarily anchored at 100% and this will be important when we deal with the mid-tones because the mid-tones the power needs to be normalized to work properly okay uh, now we need to deal with the shadows and you see here they look quite different so what I would do first is to use the offset which is basically um, an addition does an addition and I will set it to something warm, but magenta, warm. And you see here that we have a nice um, warmish green and we will make it contrast with the offset. So our black, the offset is kind of setting the black and so our black will be magenta-ish, but the shadows will be greenish, and that will create a very nice micro contrast in the shadows, because the shadows will not have the same exact color as um, the black. And this will create a kind of tension, um, because basically we will use the opponent color here, so it's almost this color minus 150 degrees. So let's increase this. And when you select use, um, it's um, useful to overdo the chroma just to be to, to see um, better. But then of course, when we have chosen the use, we will go back on the chroma to make it better uh, blended. So the, for now, the purpose is just to see what we are doing a bit better. So, I need to find something that gives me the warmth I want here. So there is more red in, in, uh, in the reference than here right now. So I will increase the offset and try to find the U that gives me enough. So I can, I think I can go back slightly here.
And what will be of great help is the boots. You see the color now is pretty close. So that's good. Um, the last step is to deal with the mid-tones and the mid-tones they will be mostly on the heel so I will use the color of the heel to nail the mid-tones. Um, and here you see the mid-tones on the reference they are slightly more red than here. Here we are more on the green side which also may be um, increased by the fact that we added some green in the shadows. So we will need to add some more red in mid-tones like this. Uh, sorry, wrong slider. I need to increase the chroma, not the U. The U was roughly right. We can even go further. I think this is the correct hue. It's a kind of orange with not too much red. Uh, it's with a bit of yellow. Now we will decrease the chroma to try and match the reference. And so it was to be expected, but uh, we the the warmth in the in the shadows got too high. So now we have to fix that. And to fix that, we will have to shift the shadows towards something more cyan. Like this. So this process took me a long time. Um, because... Well, even though you have a separation between the shadows and the highlights, um, they still kind of you know, they blend, they merge, because when you are at the mid-tones, uh, basically the shadows contribute to, um, to mid-tones um, at 50%, and so do the highlights. So highlights and shadows, they contribute equally to mid-tones, and, and then you also have the mid-tones, uh, which are used uh, to, uh, um, yeah, to blend. Basically, you have to blend things like this, because if you had a harsh transition, then it would look very weird uh, but this is what makes it a bit difficult to manage um, but anyway we have something quite nice now and i will cheat by copy pasting the previous values that i had before uh, so i was at you see that regarding i ended up on pretty much the same u on not quite actually um so something like this Okay, let's. I will duplicate this one and pretend. Ah, damn it. I did it wrong. Duplicate instance. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so let's pretend that we finished the color grading part. Oh yeah, I have it twice, that, that's why it looks so weird. Yeah. Um, now remains to set um, the saturation. You know that film resaturates the shadows and desaturates the highlights. So straight on, desaturate highlights. to uh, let's see so we will try to match the cloudy sky uh, between the the target and the reference so we should have something like this and then you see that well the, the mid-tones here have lost a lot of saturation um, so we need to increase the mid-tones and then we need to increase the shadows So the green I have here now is pretty close to this one. The, the orange is pretty close to this one. And the skin is nice. But obviously not very, uh, not super close to 
the um, to the, the the reference. I've also a better um, water uh, with better ref uh, reflections but bear in mind that here we have more sky reflecting in the water versus here we have more hills so the color of the water w will obviously be different and so basically that leaves us with what i did first so 100 in the shadows a minus 33 in the highlights and zero in the mid in the mid tones so basically the process is uh, again you start with the the highlights you try to match and then you start you um actually you can carry on after the highlights with the, the mid tones or the shadows as you wish um and once you're done you should have something cool so here maybe the Actually, the shadows are a bit oversaturated compared to the reference. So we could alleviate this a bit. And maybe add a bit more in the mid-tones to compensate and get the same kind of hill colors. Keeping in mind that the hill should be a bit more saturated here because it's closer from the lens. Um, and we could even desaturate a bit more the highlights in here which will have the nice property of giving more definition on the face highlights so basically just desaturating highlights will give a nice, nice um, effect here I, I overdid it on purpose but you, just for you to see the, uh, the general ID okay please so if I don't desaturate at all, the, the, the flesh, um, the, the skin looks fleshy and also here slightly yellow. And as I desaturate, I get a more pleasing skin tone. And also, since we are targeting only the highlights, um, we get some more definition on the skin. So that's very pleasing and very beautiful. If I show you the before and the after, so now we get a skin that is a bit less pink. Um, with shadows that are a bit warmer but then we didn't overdo um, the skin highlights they are very beautiful uh, obviously here I feel like I've desaturated the background too much here so let's increase this so you need to find a balance that will blend everything so that's why if you absolutely want to emulate film it's probably better to do it with a lot so a lookup table um, that would be best done by shooting some sort of color target for which you know the, the reference and then you match your digital picture against your um, well film target and you bake the deviation the distortion into a lot and that will give you um, a mathematical way of solving everything that we did uh, visually here I don't like LUTs very much because I, again, um, this film look is okay, but I don't like the skin tones. And I actually prefer uh, the kind of result I got here. So I, I kind of prefer um, being able to build my own film emotion and, and Color Balance RGB helps you doing this. It's quite powerful. Um, and even though it's not exactly the same look, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can you can get the same overall feeling. So it's good enough for me and also like for this particular instance anyway, the skin looks better um, with this approach. Okay, so we are not quite done yet because film doesn't um, 
stop at uh, Peru. So the Peru is the biggest part. I feel like um, the, the, the return to the film look is, is uh, as much um, a form of nostalgia as it is a reaction to the photography that happened in the, in the early 21st century. If you look at the pictures that were um, standard or very uh, common uh, 10 or 15 years ago, you see that uh, photographers used to boost the contrast way too much and the sharpness and the saturation and basically overdo everything. And I feel like people grew tired of this and they came back to film because, well, there is some saturation in film, but not everything is saturated and it gives an overall better balance. Um, if you saturate everything, basically it's like writing a full block of text in bold um, or in all caps. Um, putting some bold uh, font face in your text is meant to put an emphasis on some aspect. And if you start emphasizing everything, that then it just defeats the purpose. And uh, similarly, when you are doing color work and you saturate some parts of the picture, I will... I would always recommend to desaturate something else um, just to kind of keep a, a certain balance and make your subject pop out by its uh, colorfulness or saturation um, but slightly dim the saturation in the rest of the picture uh, to avoid um, well being kind of aggressive um, uh, a picture where everything is saturated is kind of a of a, of a symphonia that is played very loud for one, one hour. Uh, not only it, it gets tiring, but also uh, you kind of lose the excitement uh, when things go a bit more um, uh, vivace. So uh, there is another thing that we need to simulate. It's the halation. Halation. Don't know. It's written there. So, so what happens with this thing is that film is layered like this. So you have three sensitive layers, and basically the light goes through the three layers um, one by one. And when it reaches the last one, there is some light that will bounce on the backing of the film or um, well, on, on everything in, uh, in the camera, really. Um, and this will create light diffusion, um, especially in the last layer, which is the red one. And that's how you get this kind of um, relation here. Uh, so let's see a real one. So you get this kind of effect. It's most noticeable when you have a hard edge very contra contrasted, so you get a leak of red light around. Um, that is basically the result here um, of the halation process of light diffusion. So there is um, there is a an anti halation backing, but it doesn't it, it which, which prevents most of the effect, but it doesn't prevent all the effects so you still have a bit and if you look carefully on my reference picture here let's see you get this kind of elation um, around well again the construct the contrasty part the slight difference here is it's not only on the red part it's a bit on the it's more on, on the purple side, so it means that we have some blue. And the blue might be because I corrected the white balance, which was too warm, so I, I uh, made it a bit colder. And this cold um, thing, basically I shifted all colors toward blue, and this is what may have uh, made the, um, the halation shift from pure blue to slightly purple, but that's not an issue. So we can choose to keep um, the red halation. And to do this, um, it's very easy actually. You can use 
a diffuse and sharpen module, which is meant for this kind of uh, diffusion. You need a radius that is, well, will be chosen depending on how wide you want your addition to, uh, to occur. You can choose only to, to work on the fourth order. Uh, it will be a bit better blended. And you will use a blend mode um, on the RGB red channel. So let's see if I enable this. You see the red. So if I don't use the, if I use all RGB channels, I get um, a kind of blooming. Actually, you can do the same with the blooming uh, thing. Um, and if you remove slightly the first order, and then you can just cancel the second order, and again cancel the third order, um, because we will use uh, everything isotropic, so it doesn't matter. Uh, when it's isotropic, first and second order, they are equivalent, and third and fourth order, they are equivalent as well. So we use uh, an isotropic um, diffusion because that's what happens. Light goes in all directions, all directions without making much a difference. Um, and so the first order will, you see, um, invite more low frequency contrast, low frequency objects, while the Fourth order will be more of an edge. If you want something more uh, blooming, um, dreamy, maybe focus on the first order. Um, but if you want an, a more defined edge, actually, I should have taken. I should have taken a snapshot for reference. Yeah, the snapshots, they are annoying. So uh, let's blend this on the red channel now. Okay, and now we will try to make it more gentle. So to make it more gentle, we reduce the speed, which here is kind of the strength. Um, and I, f I feel like we need something more wider and more gentle, so we will go to the first order, like this. And so you will have your halation like this. Um, but you could also force it to be anisotropic and follow the gradients, though I'm not sure it matters much here yeah, but maybe if you have complex shapes that would be interesting to use as an effect okay and um so since we have here some purple halation and here we have only red to create purple from red we need to add some blue so we will duplicate this instance And this time, instead of blending it on the red, we will blend it on the blue. And like this, we create it purple. Um, and we can reduce the opacity just to be a bit more gentle. And I feel like the, the, the blue should be a bit wider, but less intense. I don't know, just a feeling. So let's ditch the fourth order because we don't need sharpness in here. And try to find the sweet spot. Okay, not that much. And here we have some purple. 
So obviously here the picture is less sharp, so that would also that could also be dealt with by um, making it unsharp on purpose. So that would be using a diffuse and sharpen basic one and uh, diffuse it. Not too much. This is the before and this is the after. Though once this is done, you see that we remove some contrast because we basically cancel the blacks by um, merging them with the highlights around. And so that could be dealt with by increasing the black in Filmic to get more global contrast, even though we removed local contrast right now. And the, the last step is to use um, some grain. Okay, so the logic is the same. But the problem is the grain in Dark Table um, happens on the Luma, on the Luminance uh, channel. So you see it gives this kind of uh, non-chromatic grain, which is not what we have here. Um, so again, the, the trick is exactly the same. We will start with... Uh, so we need to, first of all, use the RGB blending because we need to blend it on RGB, even though the module is working in LAB. Can be display can be seen doesn't matter here because anyway grain is applied in a LED so and then we use the red channel and we will increase the coarseness And just like that, we created um, chroma noise. And then we can uh, we can do the same on. Okay, so there's there's a trick I need to show you. If I simply duplicate this, and then I changed uh, the channel upon which it's applied. You see that um, since the, the coarseness is the same, basically the grains we created, they will be stacked on top of each other because it's not really random. It's not a re random process. It's a, it's a pseudo random. So it means that each pixel will be affected the same. Uh, and if I redo it once again on the green channel, now you see that again I have had I, I get my initial luminance noise. Uh, so the, the trick to um, work around this is to use a different, score, a different coarseness. And doing so, uh, you will not have the same uh, width of the, the grains. So basically, it will, you see, make it... Um, a bit more, um, well, it, it, it will make it chromatic because otherwise it's achromatic since you get um, exactly the same grains overlapping in each channel. So this is obviously a bit too much. We will reduce the strength here and there. And of course, there is a discussion discussion here to have about how much you want to emulate film because these are actually flows we are adding back. Uh, and the, these are flows that people have tried to fight um, for the most time. Um, but then you can use them uh, to create, to play because aesthetics are required and, and we have been 
uh, exposed to film for a very long time, so we know how it looks like, and we have associated this kind of aesthetic with a kind of movies and, and era. Um, so it, this kind of looks means something to us. Um, so the, 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 the whole idea of recreating this look would be to play with the subtext it has, so to play with the ideas um, that associated with this look. Uh, so you you um, you go back to certain like you yeah, um, it's kind of communicating without even even communicating. So you play on the on on what this kind of aesthetic um, is reminding people because it's linked to an era, it's linked to particular movies and so on. But so uh, now you've. Uh, so you've seen the method to create all this. So you have the halation, you have the noise. Um, maybe there would be some need for a special uh, color grain module in Darktable, I don't know. For now, this is doing the trick and I'm not sure. I mean, a lot of people are interested into recreating fake chroma noise, which usually is not very pleasing. And if we look at what we just did, So that's it. Obviously, all this noise um, and halation is not very visible from this um, zooming uh, level. So again, was it worth the extra trouble uh, if we were to export this picture for social media or whatever? Probably not. The, the color part will do most of the job. Um, and that's how you do it. So again, not sure it's a good thing to try to stick too closely to any particular kind of em film emulsion. I think it's better um, to create your kind of own virtual emulsion. The, the basics are pretty much the same all the time. So you have to manage micro contrast. So basically here, the offset is the black, and the black is set to magenta-ish. And then with the shadows lift, I will try to uh, make the shadows go the other way. So they will start from magenta, and then they will end up in green. And because everything is a color shift and not an absolute deviation, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to use um, the exact opponent color. So you have to figure out by yourself um, what is the proper um, value depending on the effect you are targeting. Trying to uh, warm up the mid-tones is usually a good idea, but then to avoid the adversarial effects you need to temper this setting with some blue in the highlights. Otherwise, if I remove the blue, you see that uh, especially the face will start looking too, too yellowish. It's the, the, the yellow is too dense here. So it's good to always have some sort of balance. Um, if you are warming the mid-tones, then make the highlights colder. And we also made the shadows colder. Um, so we kind of manage micro color contrast like this uh, by doing small shifts around our um, luminance range. And then you have the perceptual saturation grading, which has a very smooth behavior. Um, that can be a solution to, again, um, add the, the, the desaturation that comes with increasing exposure. You could also maybe add a bit of uh, perceptual brilliance and so on. Uh, no, add it, I meant. Um, but mostly I recommend to deal with the saturation in Filmic or in the tone equalizer. Um, this will, this is only meant to make color, to work on color, so don't try to hack it. Uh, hoping that you will save yourself another module uh, because if you overdo it like this there was a bug that was reported today or uh, a couple of years ago uh, a couple of days ago sorry 
uh, where the highlights at some point they become full black and that's because yeah like this and that's because basically you are trying to make the white whiter than white and that makes the color space fail uh, the math you break the math because basically you're not supposed to change the the luminance of white that's the wall reference of the color space uh, so if you use the perceptual brilliance try to do it very gently especially in highlights it doesn't matter much on shadows and midtones but usually i feel like it's not very useful except perhaps on shadows if you want to reinforce the kind of um, dense shadows saturation you could remove some um, brilliance in the shadows and perhaps increase it a bit in the midtones uh, for good good measure but try to avoid messing with the highlights it's usually not a very good idea unless you are very gentle and you know what you are doing but in here i think it's good enough and by the way you can also uh, decrease the luminance highlights with the um, the luminance uh, of the gain and this is um this is much more robust this one shouldn't blow up in your face like the other one because it's not perceptual uh it's actually physical okay that's all for this video hope you enjoyed it um see you the next time